I'm going to put this in the beginning, Jasper. Got my reacting glasses on. Make me look smarter. They're just there to protect me from the light. I'm getting old, guys. So I got to protect. Uh, I'm breaking down. I'm breaking down. Ooh, it's Face Sensei here back with another video. So first off, guys, I am at like 785,000. I've been stuck there. I think I've been at 800 before, but you know, YouTube goes up and, up and down with subscribers. So I try not to think too much about it. But I want to break more than a million. But let's focus on breaking 800,000. Tell your friends. Tell your neighbors. Let's try to get above 800,000. Leave a like and subscribe. Now, let's get to it. I've been also been trying to train with UFC fighters. This is nothing new. Like, training with mixed martial artists and UFC fighters is nothing new of me, especially if you've been a fan of my channel. Um, I've recently talked to Wonderboy again on Instagram about training with him again. Um, I reached out to Tywin Woodley, and my coach has trained with uh, T. Wood as well. And it just so happens that, obviously, Jake is fighting Ben Askren, so I'm like, I'm trying to use that as an angle to train with him, see if I can steal some training with him. Um, but I don't know if they think because I'm like a YouTuber, I'm coming on the YouTube side and, you know, they don't trust YouTubers. Like, I, you know, but I'm a martial artist first, so um, go spam Ben Askren's uh, Instagram to see if, you know, to train with me. Not necessarily, you know, just not to spar. I, I don't think Ben likes to spar. He wants to train, and I don't want to put him in a weird position. Um, I'm not trying to go out there and be like, a punk or anything like that trying to make a name for myself i really want to train with ben Askren. he's a he's a legend so anyways so back to dylan dennis weird thing is dylan and jake have been going back and forth for a few years now i just watched a video it's like beef from like two to three years ago ever since the original boxing thing started i really don't know why i don't know if it was like jake's sneaky angle and try to get closer to conor mcgregor because there were talks about that the big thing has been well dylan backed out of the fight because of an injury you know, and talk, talking about his knee injury. And it's not just like he's recovering from a knee injury. I saw a recent video, here's a clip of it. I wish I could have been on Fight Island tonight, but I'm dealing with a knee injury. So it's still not 100%, you can see. It's kind of coming in and out, but we'll get there. I'm gonna bet the house tonight on my brother Connor. I'm gonna predict a early KO. It definitely will be in the first round. So make sure you bet the house on him. Oops. His knee is disgusting. Like there's actual, like a lot of movement in his knee. So he had surgery, I believe. He had a lot of work to do to get back to that being stable, right? Obviously, he'll get back to boxing sooner rather than MMA because you don't got to worry about the leg kicks and then grappling. You know, since he's a world-class, super high-level grappler, um, he definitely can't be doing any of that for real uh, because that knee is gross. So that is legitimate, in, in, in my opinion. Um, but the other thing, his boxing ability, right? He's training. He's, he's training with Con been training with Connor. He's shown some you know striking but we don't see a lot of it because he's so focused on grappling like ben Askren. he's so good at it why would he try to like balance it out right there are some guys who are had like some wrestling background and they try to mix it in with their striking when you are that high level there's no point it's like wonder boy being like you know i'm trying to work on my wrestling let me try to implement it and use some takedowns no there's no there's no point just stick to striking right if you are a grappler you stick to grappling doesn't mean you aren't developing skill along the way this is actually some of the first Sparring that I've seen that's recent of Dylan, and I see a little bit of his knee injury holding him here. But I want to just break this down, go over some of the things that I like, some of the things that you know that could be like, ooh, I don't know, you can get you in trouble there. Um, but again, this is just one clip, so not a lot off of it. But this is the first clip that you've seen of him, so this is pretty interesting. So here we are. What I'm interested to see with Dylan sparring is that how flat footed is he going to be because he does not um, have a knee right now, his knee looks torn up. So, um yeah, let's just look through it, you know, and then we'll talk about it. You can just hand wrap. It's very boxing-esque. Here we go. No headgear, first of all. To me, seems like you don't really respect your partner's uh, power, right? Especially in a boxing. If you're doing boxing training, you're going to get punched hard. So headgear is very smart. Um, but right off, right off the bat, what I saw is a little bit of pushing. Um, and him being flat-footed, it's not too totally uncommon for a boxer to be flat-footed, but um, you have to be very strong, and you have to have a lot of power, um, and your head movement's got to be really slick with a tight guard. You're not seeing that right now, um, so I don't know where his knee is at, but what I tend to see from MMA fighters, we tend to have our hands like more on the on the outside. We tend to pop with our, you know, when we're doing MMA sparring or, or striking with our hands because we don't need um, all of the weight behind the punch you would like you do with the boxing glove because it's a much bigger 10, you know, ounce glove. It's a lot bigger than, you know, the three, four ounce that you're wearing um, for MMA, especially these pro fights. So, and you don't want to have your hands in tight for a cover because the punches can get through. So you tend to see this long style thing. And that works if you have a lot of natural power and speed. But if you don't, it's going to get you into trouble. So that's his boxing partner. But we don't see any of those punches that he threw on the bag on him. So he's not really throwing a lot of heat back. Then again, we don't really see that. 
But you see like this stuff here, a lot of straight legged and slapping with the punches. Um, there's not really like hooking and punching. We saw what happened to Logan with KSI. That's a deducted two points already. So technically he lost the sparring match. Um, but they see like the punch by his partner. Um, you see that kind of like falling forward and throwing. Um, a little bit more slapping on um, punches instead of digging. He's not really putting his weight behind it. A lot of pushing um, with the punches. Um, but he's got the, the sparring partner's not really doing much back. He's not throwing, you know, a little jab, a little cheeky jab, a little cheeky hook. Nothing um, to really put him in danger. And I think that's what we want to see. We want to see like a real sparring match. Obviously, I don't think we're going to see it for a while or if, when he, he gets really training. Um, so this is kind of like a sneak peek. But um, it's not a very impressive sneak peek. But it is impressive if his knee is still moving like that. This is very impressive because I have a slight knee injury and it hurts. So that kind of stuff. But this kind of opened guard, I don't know what it is, but people tend to push when they're punching, like with tip of the top of the belt instead of really digging in. You know, like a, like a boxer would really dig. Like they really tend to turn over to get those knuckles felt. Um, behind the glove in MMA you can hit with like this part of the hand you can hit with like the front leg because your knuckles are going to make contact so you, some people actually like to punch with this with their hooks because it's not covered so it's just straight knuckles um, to your opponent so these are some of the things that you've seen from Connor and obviously from Dylan but a lot of slapping clinching and punching can't do that sir um, but nothing crazy to me like obviously he's in the middle of training but against someone like Jake, Jake, who's been training against real boxers and training um, with pros and training with just the boxing gloves and, and with a boxing coach, the guard is tight and he's really turning over his punches now with power. And that's something I talked about when, when he first started that he tended to, he tended to slap more, um, but he's obviously got a lot more power and his technique is a lot better. So I think if MMA, MMA fighters take him lightly and underestimate him and they start doing this pawing and touching and slapping, Jace is going to sit there. With his, with his elbows in and kind of move and just deliver some real power shots. So um, I don't think it's as easy, as simple as just, you know, I know how to strike because the striking is very different in MMA and the defense is very different in MMA than it is, than it is in pure boxing. So I don't know. I just, I don't, I see some things of concern here uh, in, so far with Dylan. And Jake still looks better than me. Than me. But, but again, look, obviously the cameras are on. You know, he knows that, so he's not going to do 110%, you know what I mean? Um, and neither is his, his opponent, so. But I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. To me, it just seems like very uh, MMA-style dirty boxing you know, in there. You know, the clinching and the punching and the falling on your opponent, you know, the hand fighting and stuff like that. Um, that can be very dangerous if you're not allowed to elbow or, or shoot for a takedown um, because you can have a big hook, big uppercut coming in between those things, and you you're not going to be able to grab. Um, so, very interesting. Let me know what you think. I think Jake is still the uh, favorite in this one. Uh, he's looking more impressive every day. So, unless we see more, that is my conclusion. Um, but again, leave a like and subscribe. I'm trying to get over 800K and <laughs> make my way to... I just want the 1 mil pack. I got my 100K. I want that. That's like my main goal on YouTube to get the 1 mil pack. It's just so cool. And then I'll retire. I'm just kidding. I will never retire from YouTube. But anyways, leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you guys soon. Oos!